right, in this video, this is going to be a series of videos where I cover some various types of path animations. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on this square following this path we have here. And in future tutorials, we will see where we can create this uh, blue animated path as well as this fading path here as well. So we have a blank preset loaded up in KOWP and let's go ahead and create the path for the square to follow. And to do this, we're going to add a stack group and inside of that stack group, let's go ahead and add a rectangle. And for this rectangle, let's make the width 300 and the height 10. Now you can use other numbers as well, but you have to keep these numbers in mind, especially the width here. So backing out of here and still inside of that stack group, let's go ahead and add a circle. And I'm making that circle's width 200. We want to remember this number as well. Over in paint, let's go ahead and set this to stroke for the style. And I'm going to set this stroke to 10 as well to match that of the rectangle. Now, instead of us having the stack group being vertical, let's go to the stack group itself, go to layer and let's set to horizontal center. That way the circle will be horizontally centered with this rectangle. And now for the position of this stack group, let's set it to center left. So now we have this stack group in the center left of our screen. And again, let's bear in mind that the rectangle has a width of 300. That's going to be this length across here. And then our circle has a width of 200. So the radius of this circle is going to be 100. We have to bear these numbers in mind when we create our complex animation for the square. And now we can head back into root because we are ready to add our square and we are ready to animate this square. And with that said, let's go ahead and add that square. And for this square, I'm going to set its width to 40 and I'm just going to change its color real quick. Now let's position this square in the center left as well. And with the center left set, you can see that we are centered up with this rectangle perfectly. Now some things we have to bear in mind here when we get ready to animate this square, we probably do not want it to start right here. Maybe we want it to go off the screen and we can quickly do that by using the X offset. If I set the X offset to negative 40, which is the same thing as the width of our square. Remember our square has a width of 40. So with the position set to center left and our X offset set to negative 40, it is off the screen. And we have to bear this in mind too when we animate this across the rectangle. Let me show you what I mean. Let's head over to animation. Let's go ahead and add one. And for this animation, we're going to set it to loop. I'm going to go ahead and set my ease to straight. And for the action, let's select complex animation. And for right now, I'm just going to focus on this square getting from here to right here. And I want the center of that square to stop right here at the end of this rectangle. And to accomplish this, let's go into the animator. And for right now, again, we're just going to focus on moving that square over there to the other side of that rectangle. So for 100% of this animation, I'm going to set the X offset. Let's start with the width of that rectangle. And that was 300, I believe. Let's check on that. And I tell you what, since it is looping for right now, let's just go set the react on to a formula. And for the formula, let's set it to one. And all I really want to see here is if this square is going to stop at the center and you can see that it does not. Now we'll set this back to loop right here in a second, but here's my point. I want this square to come off the screen and I want it to be dead in the center here. Now, even though our rectangle had a width of 300, the reason it is not going to the end of this rectangle, I want the center of that square. Let me zoom in. I want the center of this square to be at the end of the rectangle. The reason why it's not, even though we have set the animator to a position of 300, remember we did move this square off the screen. We moved it to the left 40 units. However, when we moved it 40 units off the screen, if we think about the center of the square, the center of the square is technically 20 units off the screen. Come on down to the animator again. Let's set the X offset to 320. And what is this really doing? By setting the X offset to 320, it's going to go 300 units, which is the width of the rectangle. And then the additional 20 units is half of the width of the square. Let's save this and apply it and let's see what we have. Now we have the center of this square at the end of that rectangle. Now we are ready to rotate this. 
Now I should have mentioned this earlier, but depending on the length of your rectangle and the circumference of this circle, a little bit of geometry here, you may have to adjust the percentages of your animator to get this to look like one uniform motion. As a matter of fact, I don't even have the circumference set up perfectly with this rectangle, but this will get the point across. Ultimately, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. We're gonna say 25%, and then we're gonna say 50 more percent, and then we're gonna do 25% back. Let's take this one step at a time. So for X offset, we're gonna move that 320 units, but I want this to be for the first 25% of the animation. And now we are ready to rotate this square. Now to do this, we have to change the rotate center, and it's actually going to be the rotate X center. So let's go ahead and add another piece to our complex animation. And we're gonna do this at 25%. But technically speaking, we could have done this at 0% as well. So let's select the rotate X center. And if you recall, the width of our circle was 200 units. That is the diameter of that circle. But we want to rotate around the center, so the rotate X center is going to be half of that. Let's use a value of 100 for the rotate X center. This is the radius of that circle. Now, depending on which way you want to rotate it, you may have to use a positive 100 or negative 100, depending on how you have your stat group set up. But since I'm going to rotate it to the right of where the square originally is, I'm using a positive 100. So let's go ahead and add that. And I mentioned a moment ago that we want 50% of this animation to be the rotation around the circle. So if we add 50% to 25%, we get 75%. So let's go ahead and add another piece to our complex animation, and this will be 75%. We want to rotate the square 360 degrees. So let's set our value to 360. Now let's check this, and things are gonna look crazy. This does not look right. And that's because of two things. For one, I tell you what, we're gonna come back up here and we're gonna set this to loop. So now we'll see this animation constantly loop. And sometimes the advanced editor does not show things the way they look, but this is still jacked up. I'm not gonna lie to you. So let's save this, go to the home screen. Now, the reason why this is jacked up, it looks like it's trying to follow the circle, but the thing is we have this square rotating from the very beginning of the animation. Real quick fix here. Let's go back into the animator of the complex animation. Now, technically what this animation is doing for the first 75%, we have it rotating 360 degrees, but we don't want this rotation to start until the square has moved to the right side of that rectangle. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come back and we're gonna add at the 25% mark, we're gonna set our rotation to zero degrees. Now here's what this is gonna do. For the first 25%, the square is going to move to the right and nothing else because we have the rotate set to zero. And then from 25% to 75%, we're gonna rotate from zero degrees at 25% to 360 degrees at 75% around a center of 100 units or 100 pixels or whatever we wanna call it to the right of the square. Now this should look good. And as we can see, it still looks a little jacked up, but notice the square does move to there, and I'm gonna bump this time on up some. Let's set the duration up to something higher so we can actually see what's going on here. So now notice the square comes to here, and then it starts to rotate, but it looks like it's rotating too big, and ultimately we're gonna come back to the beginning. Let's save this and apply it to the home screen. And I mentioned the advanced editor looks jacked up sometimes. But if you look at this, this is rotating perfectly and it's gonna stop here because we haven't completed the complex animation. So let's watch this one more time, comes to the end, and then it starts to rotate around the center of that circle, and then it's gonna stop here. So you can see that it does look a little bit different in the advanced editor, so I encourage you to save and look at your actual wallpaper when you're doing this. But if we come back to the animator, what we want to do now for the last 25%, which is ultimately going to be 100%, we want this square to go back to where it was, and if we set our X offset back to zero, it's going to return back. However, let's bear in mind with what happened with the rotate. We don't want the X offset to go back to zero over the whole course of this animation. As a matter of fact, we have to set our X offset to 320, and we want it to remain at 320 after it moves to the right 
and we want it to stay at 320 as it rotates. So let's think about this. It's moving to the right and it's rotating for the first 75% of the animation. Let's go ahead and add that. Now let me try to explain this to you before we look at it. First 25%, it's moving to the right, 320 units or pixels. We have not rotated it any for the first 25%, but we are coming in here and changing the rotate X center to 100. From 25% to 75%, we're going to rotate it 360 degrees because we are going from 0 to 360 as we progress from 25% to 75%. And remember, it's very important to set that rotate 0 at 25% as we saw earlier in the tutorial. But also notice what's happening here. From 25% to 75%, we are not changing the X offset any. But then finally, from 75% to 100%, we are setting the X offset from 320 back to zero. So for that last 25% of the animation, it's gonna go from 320, the X offset that is, back to zero, and this should return the square back to where it started from. Let's check this. Now the advanced editor still looks a little bit jacked up, but let's go ahead and save this, go back to the home screen, and let's see what we got. So everything looks nice and centered here. The square is rotating nicely around the center of that circle. Again, bearing in mind the width of the circle was 200 and we had a rotate X center of 100. And now coming back in here, you can set the duration to a shorter duration so it'll rotate faster. And again, this looks jacked up. So go back and preview it on the home screen itself. And there you have it, a square following a path inside of KOWP. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.